Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here, and in today's video, we got a little bit of bad news. Bryce Love is expected to remain on IR, which will result in him missing the rest of the season, and that begs the question, what is his future in Washington? So that's what we'll talk about in today's video. If you guys are new, subscribe for Washington and NFL content. So let's get right into the video and remember to check out House of Hoodies. Use code Pedro for 15% off. They got insane jersey hoodies, including a Terry McLaurin one, Sean Taylor, and Chase Young one. I will also be giving you guys an injury update on players like Cornelius Lucas and DeShazer Everett at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So John Keim from ESPN reported this yesterday, but I'll read it right here. He said, probably obvious, but was told that Bryce Love will remain on IR, return to practice on November 11th, had 21 days to make a decision, but he didn't practice most of that time. He was cleared to practice, and I think he practice one time and that was it so this does result in him missing the rest of the season because they had 21 days to take him off that list and they haven't so he's going to be done for the rest of the year and no he is not taking a roster spot when you are on IR you're not taking a roster spot but this does suck for Bryce Love just because you know it's his second season in the NFL and he has not seen the field and even when he was healthy the first four weeks of the season or the first two three weeks of the season they had him inactive I mean he didn't even dress up for the game so even when he was healthy he wasn't fully back to what he was in Stanford and if you look at his stats at Stanford, you look at his 2015 year, didn't do much, but 7.8 yards per carry. 2016, uh, 783 yards rushing. And in 2017, his, you know, run, Heisman runner up year, absolutely insane year as a running back. Played in 13 games, 263 um, rushes for 2,118 yards, 8.1 yards a carry. And 19 touchdowns. Absolutely insane. And he decided to stay another year, which did hurt him because he tore his ACL. And not only did that, you know, hurt his draft stock, but it's caused him to still not fully come back from that injury two years later. And he still hasn't uh, been back, which again is disappointing. And it does take players a long time to recover from these injuries and not everyone is Adrian Peterson and can recover in six months and return to MVP form. Some people like Kendall Fuller, it took them a little bit longer. So what I'm going to say with Bryce Love and what his future is in Washington, this is what I would like them to do because I still think Bryce Love can be a solid running back. And you know, we have Antonio Gibson, who's going to be our number one. And we have J.D. McKissick. We know his role. He's that third down back, great pass catching back, and occasionally can get some good runs. What I would like with Love is if he can stay healthy, I think he still has a role in this on this team if he does get back, you know, get a few carries a game. And you saw 8.1 yards per carry in his junior year. That's insane. And if he could provide some of that, you know, some long runs on like second and eight, and he can get that first down, that kind of role. Um, I think it would be worth it. So what I think should happen with Bryce Love, and I think this will happen. I think they should keep him this off season, bring him into you know rookie or not uh, OTAs, you know mini camp, and also more importantly, bring him into training camp. Let him compete for that spot then, because obviously the last couple of years he really wasn't healthy or good enough, you know, fully back to his form where he should have made the roster, but he did, you know, based off of where he was drafted and his talent because he has a bunch of talent. So this year, I would say if he is anything close to what he was at Stanford, obviously bring him back. And, you know, if he's showing signs of progression, then I would definitely bring him back. But if he can, if he shows that, you know, he really doesn't have what he, you know, had at Stanford and really isn't showing some growth, then I personally would maybe move on from him, maybe release him and bring him to your practice squad. That is something that could happen because Gibson, especially next year, is going to get even more carries and, you know, more um, 
you know, pass attempts, and so is um, J.D. McKissick. So I think it could be the role is going to be shrinking for Love. So he has to make himself his presence felt in training camp. And I hope he does because, like I said, insane talent that, you know, stayed an extra year in college and he did get the degree, but that staying that extra year hurt his draft stock just because of, you know, his injury status. He got the ACL injury and it just really has never been the same again for him. But, you know, it does, like I said, everyone responds differently to these ACL injuries, so he could start to recover and fully recover and get back to what he was. And does I think he does have a role on this team as that third running back because I think he's not much of a pass catching back if you look at his stats in college. He really didn't have many receiving yards. Only in his freshman year he did so, but he can still get those, you know, long runs. And that is a good role uh, for him here if he can get back. And if he doesn't, then I guess you can keep Peyton Barber. Or it doesn't hurt to draft a running back in the 6th, 7th round. Because every year you see these running backs that are very good who, you know, or not very good there they get undrafted to get drafted in the seventh and sixth round that end up being very good running backs in the nfl like james robinson or even philip Lindsay in his rookie year so that's what i would like us to do you know see what we have in love potentially get someone in the late rounds but that's it now on to the quick injury update for the washington football team cornelius lucas was back at practice so that is very good news because he was playing good at left tackle for us and you know him him missing time obviously forced david sharp to step in and david sharp really only plays right tackle so moses morgan moses was forced to play left tackle so if lucas is back He'll play left, and Morgan Moses will play right tackle. And that's going to be a huge boost, especially against a team like the Steelers. We're going to need everyone we have um, healthy because they got a good defensive front. And Alex Smith, you know, still isn't the best at evading pressure after that, you know, obviously everything he's gone through. So I think we need everyone on the offensive line healthy. And DeShazier Everett is back practicing. I'm not sure if he was fully back from some people said he was doing positional drills. His status for Sunday, or not Sunday anymore, Monday, is still in question. There was some doubt according to John Kine, but you know, that extra day that he's going to get because of um, the cancellation or the postponement of our game could end up helping him uh, play in that game. And that would be another huge boost to that team because we don't want to see Troy Apke and then we could really not see Troy Apke at all. We could see some of Jeremy Reeves as our third uh, safety. So um, after Cameron Curl and DeShazer Everett. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know the Bryce Love news sucks. A lot of you guys were asking me about him, but we'll see what he can do. I still think um, he can recover from this, but I think he's really going to be fighting for a roster spot next year. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys like the video. It helps out a ton. Subscribe if you guys are new and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Peace.